Welcome to the Victory Medical Lounge, your one-stop destination for all the insights and guidance you need to navigate the U.S. medical license exam process. In our latest video, Understanding USMLE Step 1, we offer a detailed and supportive roadmap for various candidates including U.S. medical graduates, international medical graduates, and Caribbean medical graduates. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts and questions in the comments section. Your engagement helps us create more content that supports and guides aspiring medical professionals like you on their path to a successful residency in the United States. Join us at the Victory Medical Lounge for more insightful content and be a part of our growing community of medical aspirants. Have you ever wondered why USMLE Step 1 is often considered the most challenging hurdle for foreign medical graduates? Let's kick off this journey by understanding the ins and outs of USMLE Step 1. USMLE or the United States Medical Licensing Examination is a three-step examination for medical licensure in the United States. Step 1, the first of this triad, is a one-day computer-based examination that primarily focuses on the basic sciences. It's designed to test your understanding of concepts like biochemistry, anatomy, microbiology, pathology, and pharmacology. Now why is this step one so crucial? Well, it's the first step in gaining a license to practice medicine in the States. But more than that, it's a way for medical institutions to gauge your ability to apply scientific concepts to the practice of medicine. It's your chance to show that you can think like a doctor. For foreign medical graduates, the USMLE Step 1 carries even more weight. It's not just about passing the exam, it's about standing out from the crowd. The score you achieve can significantly impact your chances of getting into a competitive residency program. Essentially, a strong Step 1 score could be your golden ticket to a successful medical career in the United States. So how is the USMLE Step 1 structured? The exam is a marathon, not a sprint. You'll face about 7 hours of testing, broken down into 7 blocks of 60 multiple-choice questions. It's a test of endurance, stamina, and most importantly, your ability to apply medical knowledge in a pressured environment. But don't let the length of the exam intimidate you. Instead, think of it as a series of sprints. Each block is a race in itself and your goal is to cross the finish line seven times. So, to put it simply, USMLE Step 1 is your ticket to medical practice in the United States. It's a challenging but achievable goal. And with the right preparation and mindset, you can turn this hurdle into a stepping stone towards your dream career in medicine. Navigating through the sea of study resources can be overwhelming, can it? But don't worry, we're here to guide you. There are several reliable resources available that can help you master the USMLE Step 1. Let's dive in. First up, we have the PASS program. This comprehensive course is designed to help you understand and retain the vast amount of information required for the USMLE. Dr. Francis hammers on his theory of finding the concept or clue in the vignette and quickly eliminating incorrect answer choices. It offers lectures, quizzes, and practice questions making it a great all-round resource. Next we have First Aid. This is not just a book, it's a legend among USMLE aspirants. It's a concise and systematic compilation of all the key points you need to remember. It's perfect for quick reviews and last-minute revisions. Then we have UWorld. It's an online question bank that mimics the actual exam format. It's known for its challenging questions and detailed explanations. It can be a game changer in terms of understanding your weak areas and improving them. Another resource worth mentioning is Pathoma. It's a resource dedicated to pathology, one of the major areas in USMLE Step 1. It simplifies complex concepts and helps you understand them in a straightforward manner. Lastly, we have Kaplan. It offers a comprehensive guide that covers all the subjects in the USMLE Step 1. It's particularly useful for those who prefer a structured approach to studying. Now you might be wondering, which one should I choose? Well, the answer depends on your learning style. If you're a visual learner, resources with diagrams and videos like Pathoma and Kaplan might be more useful. If you're more into reading, then first aid could be your best friend. And if you want to test your knowledge under exam-like conditions, UWorld is the way to go. But remember there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to study resources. It's all about finding what works best for you. So take some time to explore these resources, try out their trial versions if available, and then decide which ones you want to invest your time and energy in. Remember, the best resource is the one that works for you. Ever wondered how prepared you are for the USMLE Step 1? The NBME has just the tool for you. 
The National Board of Medical Examiners, or NBME, offers a self-assessment tool that is a powerful resource when preparing for the USMLE Step 1. This tool is designed to gauge your readiness for the real exam and provide feedback that can guide your study efforts. To start with, the NBME self-assessment is a simulated exam that mirrors the actual USMLE Step 1 in terms of content and format. It's structured to provide an authentic testing experience helping you understand the exam's structure and how to navigate it. But the real value of the NBME self-assessment lies in its scoring system. After you complete the simulated exam, you'll receive a three-digit score. This score is intended to predict your performance on the actual USMLE Step 1. A high score indicates a strong understanding of the content and a readiness to take the real exam. Conversely, a lower score may suggest areas where further study is needed. While the score is important, don't overlook the feedback report that comes with it. This report breaks down your performance by subject area, highlighting your strengths and areas for improvement. It's a valuable tool for tailoring your study plan to your specific needs. Now how should you interpret your score? Scores above 200 are typically seen as a positive indicator of readiness for the USMLE Step 1, however don't be disheartened if your score falls below this benchmark, instead, use it as a motivation to revisit and reinforce the areas where you need improvement. Remember, the NBME self-assessment should be used as a guide, not a final verdict. It's a tool to help you identify gaps in your knowledge and refine your study plan. You should take multiple assessments throughout your study period to monitor your progress and adjust your strategy as needed. In conclusion, the NBME self-assessment is not just a score. It's a roadmap to your study plan. It offers a personalized insight into your readiness for the USMLE Step 1, helping you focus your preparation and optimize your study time. Embrace this tool and let it guide you on your journey to mastering the USMLE Step 1. Now that we have our resources and assessment tool, how do we actually study? That's a great question. Let's dive right into it. Firstly, it's crucial to understand that everyone's learning style is unique. What works for one person might not work for another. So, it's important to design a study strategy that fits your personal learning style. Don't be afraid to experiment, tweak, and change your study plan until you find what works best for you. One effective strategy that many successful students use is spaced repetition. This involves reviewing information at increasing intervals over time. It's a scientifically proven method that helps to cement information into your long-term memory. So, instead of cramming all your microbiology notes in one day, consider spreading them out and revising them multiple times over a period of time. Another strategy is active recall. This is the practice of actively trying to remember information without looking at the notes. For instance, after reading a chapter, close your book and try to recall the key points. This method is often more effective than passive reading or highlighting. Now let's talk about time management. It's not just about studying hard but also about studying smart. Break your study sessions into manageable chunks. A popular method is the Pomodoro technique where you study for 25 minutes, then take a 5-minute break. This helps to maintain your focus and reduces the likelihood of burnout. Consistency is also key. It's better to study a little bit every day than to cram a lot of studying into one day. Make it a habit. Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Lastly, don't neglect your health. Make sure to get enough sleep, eat healthily, and take time to relax and recharge. Your brain can only function at its best when your body is well taken care of. Remember, effective studying is less about the hours you put in and more about how you use those hours. It's about working smarter, not harder. So experiment with these strategies, find what works best for you, and stick to it. You've got this. You wouldn't embark on a journey without a map, would you? The same applies to your USMLE Step 1 preparation. A well-structured timeline can be your compass, guiding you through the vast expanse of medical knowledge you'll need to navigate. Let's begin by considering a typical study timeline. Generally, six to nine months of dedicated preparation is a good starting point. However, remember that one size fits all does not apply here. Your timeline might be longer or shorter based on your prior knowledge, learning speed, and the amount of time you can commit each day. Now let's talk about setting milestones. Think of these as landmarks on your map, helping you track your progress. They could be finishing a particular subject, completing a number of practice questions, or reaching a desired score in a practice test. They'll provide a sense of achievement, keep you motivated, and help you adjust your pace as necessary. And just like any successful journey, self-assessment is key. Regular check-ins with yourself can highlight areas of strength and weakness. They'll help you understand where you stand, what you've mastered, and what needs more attention. 
Tools like the NBME self-assessment exams can be extremely useful in this regard. Now let's imagine a sample study schedule. You could start off with two months of content review using resources like First Aid and Pathoma, then dedicate another four to six months for question banks like UWorld, making sure to review the explanations thoroughly, include weekly self-assessments and make sure to leave the last month for revision and full-length practice tests. But remember, this is just a sample. Feel free to adapt it based on your personal needs and circumstances. If you're a visual learner, you might want to include more video resources. If you're working or studying full-time, you might need to stretch the timeline a bit. The key is to be flexible, yet disciplined. Adjust your schedule as you go, but ensure that you're consistently making progress. And most importantly, don't forget to take care of your physical and mental health. A well-structured timeline is your compass in the journey of USMLE Step 1 Preparation. Sometimes it's the little things that make the biggest difference. Let's talk about motivation and stress management. With such a demanding schedule, it's natural to feel overwhelmed at times. But remember, the key to staying motivated is to focus on your ultimate goal, becoming a successful medical professional. Break your journey into smaller, manageable tasks and celebrate each milestone. This will not only keep you motivated, but will also reduce the stress associated with the enormity of the task. Now let's delve into the importance of mock exams. Think of them as dress rehearsals for the big show. They give you a taste of the real exam environment and help you gauge your preparedness. Don't just take them to assess your knowledge, use them to perfect your timing, enhance your test-taking stamina, and learn to manage exam anxiety. Remember, it's not just about knowing the content, it's also about mastering the test-taking process. Here's a tip. Take your first mock exam before you start studying. This will give you a baseline to measure your progress against and will help you identify your weak areas right off the bat. Now, let's hear from some successful foreign medical graduates. One common thread amongst their experiences is the importance of resilience. You will face setbacks, you will have bad days, and there will be times when you question your abilities. But the key is to keep going. Each setback is a setup for a comeback. Another insight they shared is the significance of smart work. Studying for the USML Step 1 is not about how much time you spend with your books, but how effectively you use that time. Prioritize understanding over memorizing, active learning over passive reading, and quality over quantity. Lastly, they all emphasize the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and adequate sleep are essential for optimal cognitive function and overall well-being. Remember, the journey to USML Step 1 is a marathon, not a sprint. Consistency, resilience, and smart work are your best friends. You've got questions, we've got answers. Let's dive into some frequently asked questions and common concerns that many of you might have. First up, how much time should I dedicate to studying each day? Well, there is no one-size-fits-all answer to this. The key is to understand your own learning pace and capacity. For some, four to six hours of intense, focused study might be enough, while others may need eight to 10 hours. The important thing is to maintain consistency and ensure that your study hours are productive. Next, are my English language skills important for the USMLE Step 1? Absolutely. The exam is conducted in English, and good language skills will help you understand the questions better and respond more accurately. If you feel you need to improve, consider taking an English language course alongside your USMLE preparation. Another common concern is, I'm working full-time, how can I manage my study schedule? It's a challenge, sure, but not an insurmountable one. Start by making a realistic study plan that accommodates your work hours. Utilize your weekends effectively and try to find small pockets of time during your weekdays for revision or quick study sessions. Moving on, what if I don't pass on my first attempt? It's not the end of the world, believe me. Many successful physicians didn't pass USMLE Step 1 on their first try. If this happens, take some time to regroup, identify the areas where you struggled, and focus on those in your next round of preparation. Persistence is key. Lastly, is it normal to feel overwhelmed? Yes, it is. This is a challenging exam, and it's natural to feel stressed or anxious at times. But remember, you're not alone. Reach out to your peers, join study groups, and don't hesitate to seek professional help if the stress becomes too much. And remember, no question is too small or insignificant. If it matters to you, it matters to us. As we draw to a close, let's quickly recap what we've learned today. We've delved into the intricacies of USMLE Step 1, 
understanding its importance and structure, especially for foreign medical graduates. We've explored a variety of study guides and resources available, and highlighted the significance of selecting those that align with your learning style. We've also discussed the invaluable tool that NBME exam assessment is, engaging your preparation progress. Furthermore, we've outlined effective study strategies, emphasizing the need to customize your study plan to your individual needs. We've suggested a typical study timeline and the importance of setting milestones. We've also shared additional tips and tricks to stay motivated and manage stress, and highlighted the importance of mock exams. Remember, the key to mastering USMLE Step 1 is understanding the exam, planning your preparation and staying committed to your plan. You've got this! Don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts and questions in the comments section.